Hey cats, what's good? Uh, tonight we got one topic. Uh, we're going to ask the question, is the West really ready for World War III? Or just absolutely delusional? Alright, but you know the deal. You want to hit? Here you go. Putin's war against Ukraine was never be a victory. Democrats are rising to meet the moment, relying, r rallying the world on the side of peace and security. We are showing the strength and we'll never falter. But look, the idea, the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say. That's called World War Three, okay? Let's get it straight here, guys. And today, today I'm announcing that the United States will be sending 31 Abram tanks to Ukraine, the equivalent of one Ukrainian battalion. Secretary Austin has recommended this step because it will enhance the Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory and achieve its strategic objectives. The Abrams tanks are the most capable tanks in the world. <clears throat> They're also extremely complex to operate and maintain. So we're also giving Ukraine the parts and equipment necessary to effectively sustain these tanks on the battlefield. And we begin, we'll begin to train the Ukrainian troops on these issues of sustainment, logistics, and maintenance as soon as possible. Good morning, savages. Thanks for coming. Welcome in, as always. Uh, like I said, we're touching on one topic this morning, and, um, you know, pretty easy to deduce from that intro, I'm sure. But it's the question, is the, is the West ready for World War III? All right. Um, in the intro there again, you've got the CO bedridden with biddens. Uh, March 2022 tell you that, uh, you know, sending tanks, planes, and teams into Ukraine would uh, be World War III to not get that confused. And um, then in the very next clip here recently announcing sending 31 Abrams tanks, our most advanced uh, machinery as far as that class is concerned, uh, to the Ukrainians along with parts and teams to instruct in the maintenance and operation of, right? So boots on the ground, regardless of what they want to call it, um, actually absolutely being pushed into starting a all out assault with Russia. Um, and then this is happening during, uh, you know, the, the worst time. Um, if, but if you don't believe me, uh, here's just one little, uh, little snip of, um, a high ranking, uh, EU member out of Germany. Um, her name is, uh, Ariana Baerbach and, uh, she's going to say the quiet part out loud for you. All right. Smell this. I've said already in the last days, yes, we have to do more to defend Ukraine. Yes, we have to do more also on tanks. But the most important and the crucial part is that we do it together and that we do not do the blame game in Europe because we are fighting a war against Russia and not against each other. Right? Again, quiet part out loud, she literally came out and said, we are at war with Russia. Not Ukraine's at war with Russia, not we are helping to defend Ukraine. We are at war with Russia, right? Um, the rest of what she said, obviously, pertaining to Europe. But uh, make no mistake that we are wrapped up in this knee deep, obviously, you know, 100 billion or so in, not including all the arms and, you know, yada, yada. Um, again, this is happening at a terrible time. This is happening uh, during the shrinking process of the West military um, due to recruitment issues and, uh, you know, through, you know, self-destruction, really. And um, all because, uh, the, you know, a, a large part of the West likes to believe in lollipops and rainbows as if uh, us as a species have moved beyond conflict. Absolutely, uh, you know, asinine and immature to believe so. Pretty obvious, you know, you can put two children in a room for five minutes together and know that we haven't moved past conflict, right? But, um, of course, the uh, lizards are coming out of the woodwork to uh, egg this type of shit on. Um, and some, you know, some new ones uh, resurfacing, coming out of the darkness to, you know, get a little sunlight on their scales. Uh, example here, Mike Pompeo.
we should be helping America. Mm. And helping America means a sovereign nation that is prepared to defend itself from an invasion and an attack where civilians are being killed by Vladimir Putin is in America's best interest for our economy, for our security. We should be doing everything the Ukrainians are asking us to do. <laughs> so absolute draconian warmonger, right? Uh, you know, and, and how effeminate is that guy, right? We should do whatever Ukraine tells us to do, right? I mean, ridiculous shit. Like, it, it's, he tells you it's in America's best interest overall, and especially the old economics, right? To break us and, uh, you know, put future generations in, in insurmountable debt in uh, the name of defending democracies in a country that doesn't have democracy, right? I mean, you know, absolute ridiculousness. But on that same note, you know, it, it's been happening. Like I said, it, it's also, you know, being feminized the West as a whole. But our military, through recruitment tactics, so we'll make the taxpayer pay for your axe, gashes, hormones, treatments, and whatever the hell else they want to do, right? But also through uh, the re-education of current soldiers, all about... Uh, you know, race, gender, and qualities, man. I mean, you know, it's absolute ridiculousness. Um, and just to give you a glimpse, uh, we'll show you some recruitment videos here. Uh, we'll start off with the U.S., and um, I I'm sure you're going to notice the pattern as we move along here, all right? So check it out. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. Although I had a fairly typical childhood, took ballet, played violin. I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. Standing at the altar to marry my other mom. With such powerful role models, I finished high school at the top of my class and then attended UC Davis, where I joined a sorority full of other strong women. I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it. A way to prove my inner strength and maybe shatter some stereotypes along the way. I'm US Army Corporal Emma Malone Lord, and I answered my calling. <laughs> Nothing says feared military. Like, uh, you know, strong women's that fight for qualities, right? Uh, some, some funny shit. I mean, well, I guess it would be funny if it wasn't my country, but unfortunately it is. It's actually a little bit scary to me. Um, uh, you know, you can say what you want and, but, you know, and I believe in freedom. I mean, freedom to be who you want, do whatever the hell you want. I just choose not to partake and I don't want my country defended by someone that's worried about, um, what other people are calling them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, we'll move on now. Here's Britain. Growing up, I really had my heart set on joining the army. My brother was out in Afghanistan. Hearing his experiences, that's when I knew I wanted to join as a medic. I was really worried about whether I'd be accepted but within days, I was more than confident about being who I was. I'm not afraid to talk about having a boyfriend. I thought I'd have to hide it, but once you've done it, you think, well, why, why did I make it such a big thing for so long? Mm -hmm. Noticing a little pattern there, huh? I mean, as if any of this has anything to do with the ability to, uh, you know, fight, murder, and uh, just be an overall brute. I mean, in reality, that's what you want your military for. We're not trying to make buddies. You know what I mean? We're not out here trying to spread fucking fairy dust and shit. I mean, this is supposed to be the force that's willing to murder in mass to defend your country. Okay? But uh, we'll move on. Next, the old Russia. All right? Tell me if you see a difference. The... Первый день твоей новой жизни. То, что было вчера, не имеет значения. То, кем ты был прежде, уже никого не волнует. Теперь важно то, кем ты будешь сегодня. Что ты знаешь о себе? На что ты способен? Вопросы могут остаться без ответов, но разве ты сможешь потом спокойно спать? 
хотел знать тебя. Познать границы своих возможностей. К черту границы. Ты готов ломать себя до изнеможения. Каждый день здесь боль закаляет. Шрамы, повседневность. Это ты решил себе что-то доказать. Командир здесь только для того, чтобы ты мог увидеть в нем врага. Потому что без врага нет боя, а без боя нет победы. Но на самом деле, главный враг – это ты. Вчерашний ты. Твоя задача – выследить врага, догнать его, превзойти, стать лучше, чем он, и вернуться назад победителем. Потому что завтра – первый день твоей новой жизни. One side's recruiting men, trying to build killing machines, the other's spreading rainbows, <laughs> all right? Some fucking self-flagellation, basically. But uh, this also comes on the back of things that uh, the media is not covering, like the fact that our top brass is over there with our allies, checking their readiness. And uh, one of our senior generals has came out and said that Britain is a grade B fighting force at this point, and that France who we all like to think of as the real puddings, are actually a much more a trained and equipped force to defend the EU as far as that's concerned, right? So we're ready to walk into the, the valley of death with underfunded, undertrained, and under-equipped allies. Good times for everybody involved. Um, and, uh, you know, th this also comes on the back of... Uh, Air Force General McGonagall saying, coming out and saying that he sees us in armed conflict with China by 2025, and that preparation should begin as soon as next month. Right? So the the butter's getting thinner and thinner, Bobby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Economically, militarily, we're uh, the issue with uh, depleted emergency oil reserves, also the arms and ammo that we have steadily shipped to Europe at this point. Uh, but uh, a little comic relief on top of that, we have uh, Guy Van Hofsted. Uh He was the ex-prime minister of Belgium and a very high-ranking member of the EU parliament, right? He recently come out and said that if it wasn't for Brexit, oh, Hitler's peace, Putin's wouldn't have invaded the Ukraine's, <laughs> right? As if uh, one of the largest countries in the world and the most nuclear-armed country in the world can't look over at a set of little tiny islands and see them for the self-deluded shell that they've become, right? Because the rest of us see that shit. <laughs> but uh, on the real, um, beyond the, uh, the threat of uh, mutual destruction, The only thing that keeps other countries in line is the fear of, uh, of American wrath, right? And at this point, that is our most depleted asset with the mean potato as commander in chief. Um, if you guys remember during Trump's tenure, um, he was, you know, these threats were made as well. And uh, his reply was, I'll melt those gold domes in Moscow, old Hitler's peace, <laughs> right? So you need a strong man in place, and it's a little unpredictable to put the fear of God in some people, I guess. All right, and we obviously don't have that, all right? But you guys tell me what you think. Let's argue, debate, tell me to fuck off. Like, share, subscribe. Come over to BitChute, do yourself a favor, and hit that real free speech platform, all right? Smell you later. We're not against the Republicans. We're not against the Republicans. We are, we are against those MAGA thugs. 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 Thugs.